Hey, good morning everybody. Today is the day, the day of the short laser alignment video. I'm just going to jump right into it. We're going to be covering what the different pieces of the laser alignment do, how to adjust them, what to avoid. All right, so I'm going to start right at the laser tube. There isn't much uh, that you can adjust there, but what you have is you have uh, two clamps here. And like I said, not much to adjust. I mean, you could tighten or loosen one, and this is going to either raise one end or lower the other end of the tube uh, with respect to mirror one, because uh, the the actual kinematic kinematic mount of the mirror uh, cannot be moved up and down. Okay, so your tube has to be at that level. Uh, now, whether whether the tube is actually straight across or not is not terribly critical because the mirror does have the three uh, kinematic adjustments. Now, why does it have three? Uh, the reason it has three, okay, this this uh, center one here is not for doing diagonal movements. What this is for is when you turn all three screws, let's say you turn them all the way uh, counterclockwise, uh, what that will do is that will bring the three brass screws all the way out and this entire plate that holds the mirror is going to be flush against the back mount. Okay, so if you turn all of the screws uh, clockwise until they bottom out at the other end, then it pushes the entire mirror forward. Okay, now with respect to where the beam is hitting on the mirror, what that does is it actually moves the beam left to right uh, in parallel. That is, it, it does not introduce a, uh, a tilting, a left or right tilting, and that's important later, uh, and I'll get into that, but uh, just know that when, when you're using this center brass screw, when you're turning this center brass screw, it should only be turned uh, to, in conjunction with the other two. In other words, you want to turn them all equal amounts to move it back and forth. Now, for doing pan and tilt adjustments, you only want to touch the two outer ones. That's the, the bottom one here is going to tilt up and down the beam. The one up here is going to pan the beam left and right uh, with respect to uh, the area where mirror two is located. So uh, what I usually do uh, to start off with is I back all of these screws out. I, I just assume that you know nothing is aligned, so I want to give myself the most room available. So what I do is I back these screws out uh, so that I have a bit of wiggle room in either direction. And then uh, this this gap here and this gap here, I'll measure it with a caliper or just eyeball it. I make sure that it's parallel here, and then I make sure that it's parallel here. That is, uh, the plate in the back and the plate in the front are perpendicular to each other and they're you know, nice and square. So then when I want to move my laser, uh, you know, when you're doing your dots and so forth, uh, just use these two and leave this one where it is. And then when you get that set up, turn your screw, turn your little lock nuts there to lock it in. All right, so now we're going to move. Oh, before I leave this area, if you'll look, uh, there is a metal bracket that the entire kinematic mount sits on and there's a lock screw or two there. So this mount uh, allows the mirror itself to move backwards and forwards and this again has the effect of moving your beam left to right relative to mirror number two. So you can make the adjustment there as well. And uh, part of the reason for all this adjustment is that the case is just bent sheet metal. It's not it's not bent to any high precision standards, uh, so the kinematic mounts are there to compensate for that. So off to mirror two. Now this is uh, this is where some of the biggest sins take place. Uh, with all of the fancy guides that you see online, inevitably somebody starts saying, "Aim for the center of the mirror and then line it up." Okay. So that is uh, not what you want to do, and I've covered this before in a longer, much longer video. Uh, the goal of mirror alignment is to line things up to these bars that you see here. In other words, the beam that you want coming out of there, you want it to be straight. You want it to be straight, 
with respect to this beam. I don't mean that, that you need to aim for this beam. I mean the beam needs to go in the same direction as this beam goes. The position of the mirror, the position of mirror number two, doesn't matter. This mirror could be in China. Are you going to aim for the center of the mirror when it's in China? No. This mirror could be two inches in the wrong direction, left or right, because it has an adjustment here. Are you going to aim for it there? No. You're going to aim so that the beam is parallel, collinear, or is collinear even a word? I don't know. Anyway, that's where you want the beam to aim. And so to do that, you don't want to put tape on the mirror. What you want to do is you want to put your tape or your post-it note against the metal bracket. Okay, you, this is where you want because it creates it creates a nice big target. You forget about the mirror. The mirror is not there. Okay, for this beam alignment, you simply want to put two dots in the same place on that post-it note until you get them right on top of each other. Now, that being said, 8.6. That's only for my machine. Your machine is going to be totally different and if you have an analog adjustment it's going to be different there too. But 8.6 is a low enough power for me that it's not going to instantly blast a hole in that piece of paper. Uh, I have to hold it like five or six seconds to even make a mark on it. And the reason for that is because if you blast a hole in that paper your second dot, if it's perfectly aligned, you're never going to see it because it's going to shoot right through the same hole. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to make that first uh, dot so that it doesn't actually burn a hole in the paper or it burns a very, very small hole in the paper if you catch it fast enough. And then uh, you can move it uh, farther away. So that's that's uh, usually the order you want to take it in. I'm going to fire it really quick for six seconds. Okay, and we see the dot forming there. And now I'm going to move it far away. Okay, now if my if my beam were misaligned, then what I would do after making the second dot here is that I would uh, make adjustments on mirror one on the top uh, outer screw or the bottom outer screw, not the center one, uh, to move the mirror left and right and up and down until that dot converges with this one. But that wouldn't be the end of the story, see, because both dots move. It's just the one here at the far end moves more when you make that adjustment. So, if uh, if you make if you make the adjustment, like let's say let's say the new dot were uh, out here about a quarter inch, and that I needed to move the beam. Let's see, from this point of view, I would move the beam to the left a quarter inch. Well, the other dot is going to move about an eighth of an inch in that same direction. So then you have to move back to position one, burn a fresh dot, you can move the piece of paper over a little bit so that you're making a fresh dot, and then pull it back out here to the front and make your second dot to check your alignment and continue adjusting. Because every, every time you make that adjustment, uh, the amount of error on that first dot is going to be cut in half until eventually uh, your error is less than the width of the dot itself, and then you're pretty good. Uh, so let's try this again. And then we'll check on the alignment. There's my dot. Sorry, that was at the far end, but like I said, this machine's already pretty much aligned. Yeah, and you can see that it makes that dot right in the center of the other one. And because it was already charred, it burns. Okay, so so now you've got uh, the beam coming out of mirror number one correctly hitting your uh, post-it note again it's not the mirror that you're shooting for then it's time to bring the mirror into alignment not touching anything on the kinematic mount uh, in other words once your beam is parallel now you can look at bringing the mirror into the beam you don't touch mirror number one for any of that and I'll just say this now the first time that you go through the alignment if things are not perfect guess what you're gonna have to go through the whole alignment again once once you get everything set up just right uh, you're gonna find that uh, you know the beam is not in the right place so yeah you you move mirrors around and things like that and then you have to go and revisit alignment all the way from the beginning again uh, but you're gonna see on this bracket that there are some screws holding this metal flange that holds the kinematic mount those allow you to move mirror number two left and right okay and 
the reason for being able to move mirror number two left and right is so that you can catch that beam. Okay. Now, if this thing was a mile long, again, you wouldn't aim for the center of the mirror when you're trying to align your beam. You would just align your beam to the bar and then worry about walking that mirror a mile back into your machine. Uh, so now let's say that I have my, my uh, dot perfectly aligned and then I put a piece of tape over the mirror here and I shoot a dot and it's hitting uh, over here on the edge somewhere. Well, so if it were, if it were hitting on, the, if the beam is hitting here on this edge, that means I have to move the entire mirror over that way so that it's centered into the beam. Okay, and that's exactly what I would do. I would loosen this and loosen this and voila, there you would be. Now, it's always possible that you're gonna end up with an alignment that bumps this bracket against the edge. You see how close mine is there and that you can't move anymore. Well, that's an indication that you need to revisit the mount that, on that flange that holds mirror number one, this little metal bracket underneath mirror number one. That means you need to move that guy. Okay, if you've reached the limit of your movement here, uh, where you can't bring the mirror any further to the right, and that means you got to go back there and make the adjustment there to move the beam more to the left. And you would do that by pushing uh, the bracket back. So pushing the bracket back slides the whole beam uh, from right to left in parallel. With, in other words, it stays parallel to whatever angle it was at. It just moves the beam, assuming you don't twist and stuff like that. But that's what I mean about revisiting the alignment once you start uh, moving these translations. Let's call them translations of the mirrors. Okay, so uh, once you've got the beam coming from mirror number one parallel and you've got number two centered, then it's time to go for number three. And it's the same thing. There's just no convenient surface to mount a piece of paper to. Okay, so you got to find a way to do this, uh, either with tape or whatever, uh, but you got to get another big post-it uh, in front of mirror number three because you're not aiming for the hole yet. Okay, that's that comes later. Uh, and here again we have some translation adjustments. Okay, these are smaller because, uh, yeah, it's expected that it should be smaller. You need to have your alignment somewhat uh, finer, more, more finely adjusted to uh, get to mirror number three. Uh, but again, same thing. You're going to tape a post-it there, whatever. Uh, not concentrating on the mirror itself, just concentrate on where the beam is and make sure that it's parallel and this time it's going to be to the bar that the, that the laser head uh, adjusts to. That is, you want your light beam traveling down this same line this way and traveling down the same, you know, uh, top to bottom and left to right, it needs to be going in this direction. Uh, and then again, you make your near dot, bam, you make your far dot, bam, make the adjustment, either left or right, up or down, not diagonal, don't touch that diagonal, uh, then check again near and far until you've got almost no error there, and then the final one, which for me is both the toughest to do and the toughest to explain, is that you have the mirror three adjustment. Now, some people have a kinematic mount back here, that is they have the three screws or maybe sometimes four screws back here to adjust the mirror, but on the standard stock mount there is no such thing back there, it's just the mirror tied in. So the adjustment that you have here, other than the translation, right, once once you get your beam aligned then you translate the, the mirror so that it gets centered in there. Uh, occasionally you're going to find that your beam is too high or too low coming from mirror two to number three, and there's not, there's not anything you can do on mirror number two to fix that because, again, you're not trying to stay parallel to the uh, center of the mirror, you're trying to stay parallel to the beam. So uh, the adjustment that you can make uh, if your beam is too low or too high is that you can shim these translations up with uh, some extra nuts here, which is what I had to do. So I had to do a couple of those. and. The reason mine is so drastic is because my case was severely damaged in shipping, and so it's it, it was totally bent. Uh, you know, these are just a couple of the examples. You can see how the wheels are smashed, so that's the reason for that. Uh, yeah, even 
arguing that hinge over there is completely broken. The weld is broken on that. Uh, but this was a used machine anyway. Uh, okay, so yeah, you can raise that thing up or down, but the critical adjustment on mirror number three is actually a rotation of the head. And what this controls is the tilt of the beam like this, swinging back and forth. If you get a piece of uh, quarter inch or six millimeter acrylic and you cut a line in it and that edge is uh, diagonal, then you know that your twist isn't right. So really, uh, if, if you could uh, carry this tube all the way down to your bed and draw a circle on the board that you're cutting and use that a hole, uh, and that hole is not in the center, it's going to be usually uh, forward or backwards from center, that means your mirror is twisted, so you have to make that adjustment here. And it's very difficult to do uh, just simply because of the way this fixture works. You know, it's, it's, a, it's you just screw it to loosen it and screw it to tighten it, and there's always a possibility that in tightening it, you're, you know, messing up that alignment. But that's how that works. Uh, and once you get to this end, you know, if, if you've had to touch the translations, that is, if you've had to move these around, if you've had to move these around, chances are you want to start back at the beginning again, get mirror number one, get it aligned to the, you know, to the perpendicularity or, or collinearity of the, of the y-axis rod, that's this guy here, then you want to address things with uh, mirror number two with respect to how it gets to mirror number three collinearly, and then get your twist going. And that's really all that you need to do. Now, what's the trouble with guides like the Ultimate Alignment Guide? You only have to look into the first paragraph and you'll start seeing that four letter word line up to the center of the mirror, okay? <laughs> uh, that's always gonna set you off on the wrong foot. Um, I take objection to that particular site in particular because that guy charges people to line up their mirrors and for him to continue to leave that bit of information there on his guide, which leads to so much confusion, I think it's unethical. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Uh, I don't want to start a flame war. I'm sure that guide has helped a lot of people that have either not paid attention to that comment or have been able to see past it uh, because he does cover the, the proper method after that. But it's just, if he glues that little thought into your head at the beginning that you need to aim for the center of the mirror and you can't get past that, uh, you're just going to be chasing your tail. So that's as far as this video needs to go. So I'm just going to stop it here and uh, post it. If you have any questions, I'm always available for advice. I can help you out on Messenger. I don't charge for any of this. Uh, you can find the longer video on YouTube. I'll post a link as well. Uh, I'll warn you, it's over an hour and it's me mostly rambling, but a lot of useful information there. And Judging by all the positive comments, I think it's helped a lot of people. So I hope it helps you too. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.